Hello, people. I'm Jabby Koi, joined by Chara Kirk. Hi. We're going to talk about Padman, the movie. We're going to do the usual, where I'll read you the IMDb first, and then we'll break down the film by category. This is the IMDb one-liner. Upon realizing the extent to which women are affected by their menses, a man sets out to create a sanitary pad machine and to provide inexpensive sanitary pads to the women of rural India. This is directed by R. Balki, who has done a number of interesting films. Every film he's directed, he's written as well. R. Balki? I'm, I'm probably saying his name completely wrong, but he's done Chini Kum, or Chini Kam, I'm not sure how you say it. Pa, Shamitab, Kienka, and Padman. Kienka was an interesting premise of swapping gender roles. It is traditionally the man role, goes to the woman, or it is traditionally the woman role goes to the man, breaking what's orthodox. Gotcha. This director likes to explore interesting ideas, and that's what I like about him. Mm. Padman, while it is a true story, it's a very interesting idea. After we watched the movie, we went to have Indian food, and then we were telling one of the waiters there that we had watched this really great film, and he hadn't heard of it, and he was like, what is it about? And I said, well, it's uh, based on the true story of a man who invented a machine to make sanitary pads for women in rural India. And then Jabby was like, wow, that didn't sound very interesting at all when you say it like that, which is what the story is, but it's so much more than that, right. and it is a very interesting and compelling story, and it's also a very important story. So if you guys want to know whether or not you should watch the film, whether it's worth your money, I would say it's definitely worth watching. I very, very much enjoyed this. I came out of the film actually very happy and moved. I admittedly cried during the film. I think that it is, like you said, a very important film. It's very much worthwhile, and I'm glad it was made. I'm glad I watched it. I liked Akshay Kumar's acting. I liked mm -hmm. the direction of the film. I liked the music in the movie. Just all around, this is one of my favorite Indian movies. The first thing I want to start with is writing because that's the thing that stood out to me the most here. Coming from an American background, coming from watching American films all my life and studying the way stories are told over here, I actually found this film to be very Western friendly. It follows the uh, Joseph Campbell story structure, or the, you know, the, the classic story structure we teach in screenplay writing here, where your main character needs to have a very clear objective, and if that objective is not met, it is the end of the world for him. You throw obstacles in his or her way up until the very end. While there was some expository dialogue I could mm -hmm. have done without, while there was some dialogue where they were like very on the nose, overall I'm like, this film had everything it needed. It had me hooked. I felt the main character's journey, Padman's journey, as he was basically pushing a huge boulder up a very steep hill, yeah. you know, so to speak, metaphorically. The world was basically, his world, literally his world was beating him down and I felt his struggle, I felt his pain and I and I could see where he was coming from and when he made mistakes, that's the kind of thing that you need to happen in a very, very good movie where your character makes decisions that you don't necessarily agree with but you still understand why they did it. That's just a very, very well-told story in my opinion. Yeah, and I agree with you about that, although sometimes I did feel feel that certain things went on a little bit longer than they could have. However, I think it was necessary because it takes us on that journey with him and it was long and it was hard and like you said, he really had to struggle to reach his goal in the end. If you look up Joseph Campbell, one of the things that happens in Joseph Campbell is your character is put on a path where he can't go back. And literally right. that happens here in Padman where he's put in this position where he literally can't go back anymore. Like there's yeah. no way to recover. He has to go this direction and succeed in this direction in order to recover what was lost here. Yeah. The next thing that you're obviously gonna notice is the acting here. I only had one other experience with Akshay Kumar, which was Rustam. Yeah. And a bunch of trailers, we watched the Namaste London scene. Ah, oh wait, I got one more. He was in Chowdy Chuck to China, the very, very first oh. Indian movie I've ever watched. So like my experiences with him were not like amazing experiences. Watching this movie, I'm like, okay, now I get it. Now I understand why he's a star. He is really, really, really talented. He's really good. This is a film that's a comedy and a drama, and he managed to walk that fine line between what's funny and what's serious really, really well, in my opinion. Akshay Kumar was perfectly cast for this film. I just bought him as this guy. I believed him in his journey. Yeah, he was completely believable. I found him charming and sweet, and as the character, so driven in his goal, which just made him a delight to watch. The acting 
from the supporting characters was really great as well. I thought Radhika Apte, who played Gayatri, his wife, she was completely convincing as this rural woman who believed in those superstitions and traditions and wasn't ready to give them up in the name of her own personal hygiene and safety. Sonam Kapoor, who played pa Pari? Well, her name's listed as Rhea here for some reason, That's but, weird, but, but, it was, but it's Pari in the yeah, movie. Yeah, it was yeah. Pari in the movie. I really liked her as well. She yeah. had a really great attitude. She played really well with Akshay Kumar. I watched her in one other movie called Nirja, which you guys probably know already. I thought that she did a fantastic job as playing Nirja in that film. Apparently, that was the last movie she'd been in before Padman. Like, I saw her face, and I'm like, I know this woman from somewhere, I don't know where. When she showed up in the film, it's like, it, it brought this new life to the yeah. story that I wasn't expecting, and it was welcomed. Like, not that the movie wasn't good up to that point, it was really good, and then it got even better with her showing up in the film. As an actress, I think she did a great job. And like you said, I think Rad Radhika Apte was definitely believable as that person. There wasn't a single moment where I questioned her performance. <laughs> The fact that R. Balki, and I apologize if I'm saying that name incorrect, the fact that he took on this story, I think, is awesome. It's a very important story, and what he did here was interesting because he decided to go about it in a different way, which is more commercial or commercial friendly. The mm. music is the first cue that this isn't your normal drama. It's got very upbeat music throughout. I actually liked a lot of the songs, surprisingly. Like, right from the beginning, the music got me. I'm like, oh, actually, I'm actually digging this. I could, yeah. I could actually listen to this. This is fun. That's not always the case, but that was often the case. Especially having the movie start off with a really cute, fun song. Yes. Kind of set the tone for the entire thing. You knew that it was a comedy drama right from the beginning based on the tone, and the tone was very consistent throughout the film. There was never a point where the tone breaks, and I'm like, what movie are we watching right now? <laughs> there were moments, though, where it went a little too far into the dramatic territory. There's a scene where Lakshmi makes a mistake. He, he does something he probably shouldn't have been doing. I'm not gonna say what it was in case you haven't seen the movie yet. There's this dramatic response by other characters in the movie, and the camera crash zooms on people, and it's really dramatic music. And I'm like, well, okay, hold on. Like, movie, just calm down. <laughs> Let me feel it first before you do it for me. And because it did it for me, it didn't impact me as hard. Those moments were a handful of times. Yeah. Most of the time, the movie actually did an excellent, excellent job, like top notch. It's just a few moments here and there where it was going a little bit too melodramatic for my taste, but it quickly pulled itself back on course right after that. What we were talking about earlier about it being too expository sometimes because Arbanki wrote it and directed it. I know that Arbanki understands nuances because it's established early in the film that Lakshmi's wife tucks in his shirt for him. Yeah. That's just a thing she does. And after a big blowout, after a big fight, the next day she gives him his lunch and walks away. And then she comes back and she reluctantly tucks his shirt in for him. You can see this expression in her face like, She's still not over what happened, but she still loves him and she wants to help him still. Like she wants to understand him, but she doesn't really. Yeah. Like there was a lot spoken without saying anything. And I'm like, this director clearly understands nuance. He clearly understands nuanced performances. I feel like the reason why there were moments where it wasn't nuanced and it was expository is either he just really wanted to make sure that the audience understood what was happening or he had to adhere to some kind of legacy structure or legacy uh, tropes that you'd find in a Bollywood film. I feel like sometimes he chose to be on the nose and to like really say like, this is what's happening or this is the message of the scene and this is what he's feeling or whatever because it's so important for the audience to understand. Yeah. Although sometimes I was like, uh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> right. But. I, you know, the, the message is so important to convey. Overall, all any negative critiques I've mentioned, like they, they didn't really impact me that much hmm. because at the end of the film, I walked out elated. I was like really happy with the movie. I, 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 you could ask Achara, yeah. <laughs> it's like talking nonstop about it. I thought it was so profound that this movie could be so moving and yet like dramatic and commercial and funny and also educational at the same time. Yeah. It was not just teaching you about this man's life, it was also teaching you about the process <laughs> of just making this thing. And know. no one talks about periods. Yeah. Period. It's not something that, that you know, 
anybody really openly discusses even over here. Even if you're not affected necessarily by what's happening in the movie, if you, even if you're someone like us who grew up in the States and didn't deal with that kind of stuff, it's still a message about what women deal with. It's like, it's a man demonstrating that it's okay to be a feminist as a dude. Yeah, I think that message is great. Talking about periods, talking about uh, sanitation yeah. and philanthropy and helping people, but also the fact that it's about empowering women. Women. Ultimately, women in rural villages are able to make a sustainable business for themselves, yeah. which is extremely empowering. The feminist message aside, it's a really great inspirational movie about someone who thinks outside the box. These type of mad geniuses, yeah. like they said in the movie, you know, who have this compulsion to create something, to do something, to better the world. And also as an entrepreneur, to kind of suffer the setbacks that he did. I don't know if I'd have had all those setbacks that his character had in the movie, if I could have been able to, you know, pick myself up and be like, nope, I'm gonna keep doing this. It does take a certain type of madness yeah. to have that drive and ambition to just keep going. Well, there's two things there, right? I mean, one thing is it really illustrates to you that if you want something, there's hard work involved. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. oftentimes when people talk about their stories of how they made it, the, the hard work is kind of glossed over. Michael Jordan is one of my favorite references because he goes, you know, everyone is watching when I'm dunking, when I'm making those shots, but no one was watching off season when I was constantly practicing. Here, the film does a great job of really showing you like there is a lot of work at play here. There's a lot involved in getting to your goal. It's not easy. It, he, he felt like giving up multiple times. And sacrifice, and, he lost know, a lot. The other thing it makes me think about is how many people's ideas have been squashed because they were afraid of change. How many people like Lakshmi weren't able to persist, dis, you know, in spite of all the negative feedback. Like how many people just gave up because everyone told them, you know, no, don't do it, but that's not how we've done it. If you look at every major change in the world that has affected us in a positive way, it came from someone who was thinking differently. It's a very inspirational tale is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. I, I, I think that, yeah, I'm inspired. <laughs> I think that this is one of my favorite Indian films. It moved me, it made me cry, it taught me things. I totally bought into Padman or Lakshmi's adventure in the film. I felt his heartbreaks. I felt the, those moments where he wanted to give up. And then I felt his victory with him. His speech was awesome. Like, this whole oh film was God. just, it was just yeah. a, it was a fantastic the film. The speech was so good. Yeah, this film makes me really look forward to watching Gold. This, yes. It makes me really look forward to watching Toilet Ek Problem. I'm just failing with that. Toilet. The, the toilet movie, that one. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing more of his work. I'm looking forward to seeing what he d does in the South Indian film. 2.0. 2.0. And it's just called 2.0. Yeah, that one, 2.0. I just look forward to seeing more of his work. And I look forward to seeing more of our Balki's work. I, I mm -hmm. think that he did a very fantastic job. I wish we had movies like this in the States where you could take a drama and shoot it like an action movie. Yeah. And it, had, it reaches a broader audience. You know, like the only film I can think of that is remotely like this is Whiplash, where it's a drama, it's about a kid at a conservatory, which sounds boring, yeah. but somehow, you know, Damien Chazelle or whatever his name is, he made that movie exciting, and here, our Balky made this movie exciting. Kudos to the entire team that made Padman, the director, the you know, writer-director, the actoring, the, the oh, actoring. The actorings. I'm so, like, happy that I can't <laughs> even English properly anymore. I like what everyone did in this film. I think everyone did a great job. Even, like, the little supporting cast yeah. people, like, everyone did a great job in this film. And also, I have a thing for you. Ha! <laughs> a maxi pad! Yes. See? I love it. No, I won't open it up. That's okay. No, you should show the audience all the cotton. No, it's not cotton. It's not cotton. It's cellulite. <laughs> cellulite. <laughs> cellulose fiber. <laughs> cellulite pad. Wow, Jabby. Wow. Look at that. I, oh, I got it for you and your big vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's huge. You gotta rip it open like it. There you go. There we go. Cellulose fiber. Oh, look at that. Now I feel just like Akshay Kumar. You know what I thought? I thought that in the movie he was gonna use a cotton candy machine to make the oh. cellulose fiber at one point. Because he took the he took the thing with his finger. I, th I, I guess it was just being symbolic of what he was ultimately gonna do. I thought that he was actually gonna take a cotton machine at one point and go, look a pad. <laughs>